exporting from Logic. Let's do this. Hey guys, Mark here from Promix Academy with another Logic Pro tutorial. In this video, we're talking all things exporting. What is it? How do I do it? And which one do I use? Let's jump in. So here we have a session I've been working on with a crazy good artist. Cannot play it to you yet because it's so good that frankly it might cause you to have an accident. But we can use it to learn how to export. Uh, first things first, let's go up to our export menu under file and export. And you can see there's a few of, uh, options available to us. The question is, which one do we use? Well, that depends on what you want to achieve. So let's imagine, first of all, that I have finished my track and now I want to export it for somebody else to mix. The option we're going to use for that is all tracks as audio files, or you can use the shortcut shift command E. So that'll bring up a dialog box where we can choose exactly how and where we save those files. I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to call it export tutorial. There we go. And our next option is the range. Uh, we have three options available to us. We can trim the silence at the end of the file, which kind of means it trims the silence at the end of the file. We can export the cycle range only, which is if you want to just export a portion of your track. And finally, we have extend the file length to project end. The file length being this little marker here. You can drag that anywhere in your tune and have it export up to that marker. Our next option is the save format. This is where we get to choose what kind of file we are saving it as. Um, we've got three options available to us. We've got Apple Zone AIFF, we've got WAVE, and we've got CAF. To be honest with you, WAVE file will do pretty much everything you ever need it to do. Leave it on WAVE. Finally, uh, we've got our bit depth. Uh, again, we've got a few options available to us. Handy tip, leave it on 24. You don't need to mess around with any other bit depths at this stage. Bypass effects plugins uh, basically means if you've applied any effects plugins to your tracks like reverbs or delays, they will not get included in your export. Um, the same goes for the volume and pan automation. Um, if you've done some wicked producery and you like your volume and pan automations, then go ahead and include them in your export. Personally, if I'm not mixing the track, I would prefer to give the mix engineer the control over volume, pan and any effects. Which brings us on to normalize. We have three options available. We've got off, we've got overload protection only, and we have on. Normalizing takes the peak signal of your track and raises it up to zero decibels. Uh, overload protection only kind of does the opposite where uh, anything above that zero decibel threshold will get brought back down to zero decibels. For our purposes, we want to give the mix engineer as much control and options as possible. So we're just going to use overload protection only. Down at the bottom, we get to choose any custom names that we give to those files once they're exported. Um, personally, I've never found the need. Logic automatically applies the track names that you've given them uh, in your session. If ever there is an argument for being organized and labeling your, set, labeling your tracks, it is this. There is nothing worse as a mix engineer than receiving tracks that have not been labeled. It sucks. We'd have to spend 30 minutes just trying to figure out what's what, and guess what? You pay for that. Rant aside, I think we're ready to export, so let's give it a go. And we're done. So we should find those exactly where we told them to be with exactly the same labels as they had inside Logic. All you need to do is send those over to your mix engineer and he should know exactly what to do with them. So that is exporting for uh, mixing, but let's circle back and have a look at the export menu again. Um, I'm not going to go into to, to, to much detail on any of these, uh, really because the method that I've just shown you is very, very similar, if not exactly the same 
for, for all of these. The exception is region to loop library. So let's have a look at that one. So you can see in the background that I have selected a single region of the guitar track, my acoustic track, um, and I like it. I think it's a really good addition to my loop library. So let's add it. It's pretty intuitive from here, but we'll walk through it step by step. First, we're gonna give it a name. We'll call it Awesome Acoustic Guitar. We'll give it a genre, country, for lack of a better genre. Uh, it's a guitar of the acoustic variety. And here we have some words to describe uh, the way that the uh, loop sounds, um, really just so we can recall it or it'll be, uh, we can use some filters later on. Um, so yeah, I'll describe it as clean. It's definitely acoustic. It's relaxed. It's dry and it is a part. There we go. I think we're ready to add that. So let's go create. Perfect. So let's go and see if it works. Uh, we're going to head up to the loop library up here. And if you've not used it before, uh, because the library is so vast, we tend to use filters to find what we're looking for. So we can start with the instrument. We know it's a guitar. We know it's an acoustic guitar. Uh, we can select the genre, which I think we said was country. And it was clean. It was acoustic, it was relaxed, it was dry, and it was a part. So, there it is. And that's all there is to it. So we can now pull that into our session any way we like. So that's it for this tutorial. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Hope it's been really useful. Uh, we've got stacks of content coming out so you know which buttons to click. Don't forget to check the description for some freebies. And if you want to take this stuff really seriously, you should definitely check out the Pro Mix Academy details to follow.